you to sing it. Probably the most universally known carol. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright. four to five hundred years of faith we're singing carols written 16 17 1800s it tells you the line of believing in christ goes back as my wife carla said the lord showed her her people mostly from darmstadt germany that she had 500 years of promises as the lutheran tradition of her family with martin luther she, she could stand on 500 years of promises. Well, today, it's like the Psalms, which are two to 3,000 years old. We still sing those words, and they still have all the same meaning as they did back then. So today, we sing these carols. People go, oh, well, we're fighting over Christmas trees. Go ahead. I don't care. I got one in my house. I don't care what you do. <laughs> oh, we're fighting over the date. It's the wrong date. I don't care. Because we're here worshiping the Lord. The album I did, Christmas is for Worship, I did it be against commercialism, but also that we can worship our way through anything in the Lord with His presence touching it. The last verse. Silent night. Holy night, Son, Son of God, loves pure light, radiant beams from. Get this line, guys. With the dawn of a redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus. 
the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus. Lord, at thy birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Yeah. Holy, we cry holy unto you, Lord God Almighty. living the everlasting God thank you Jesus you put on a human body you came for the salvation of all of humanity yeah, yeah. worship and adore yeah, yeah. somebody lift your hands and worship this king of glory yeah, yeah. holy God Holy God, we thank you, Lord, my Lord, my King. Yeah. We'll never get over it, Lord. We don't want to get by it, and we never want to get over the great sacrifice and what you did for us, Lord. Holy Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. And before we do our narr narration again, one that everybody knows. Glory, oh, glory, 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 in glory, Chelsea. 
Today we take up Luke chapter 1, Luke the physician, Luke the physician, he, he was detailed, he was a doctor, whatever that meant back in the day. So get your Bibles open, this is going to be about Elizabeth, another supernatural event for Zacharias, the priestly servant in the house of the Lord. So we're going to look at chapter 1 of Luke today, and I'll start with this. Luke writes about Jesus' life. Dear Theophilus, he was writing to a leader concerning the matters that have taken place among us with Jesus. Many people have undertaken to draw up their accounts of it. This is verse 1. Chapter 1, Luke. Based on what was handed down to us by those who from the start were eyewitnesses and proclaimers of the message. That is so important, guys. Based on what was handed down to us by those who were from the start eyewitnesses, it really takes more faith to believe in evolution and Darwinism than it does the Lord Jesus, because these are the reports from the eyewitnesses and the proclaimers of his message. Therefore, Your Excellency, since I've carefully investi investigated all these things from the beginning, it seemed good to me that I too should write you an accurate and ordered narrative. Wow. Luke is telling you, I'm writing an accurate and ordered narrative so that you might know how well-founded are the things about which you have been taught. That is so significant even to us today, you guys. He says, so that you might know, Theophilus, how well-founded are the things about which we've already taught you in the Lord. Then Joseph, Joseph Benson's commentary says Luke's super detailed history put a hyphen between his and story. Luke's super detailed his story or history is referred to as referring to the fullness of the evidence which these things were attended. It's evidential. It signifies that the doctrines were taught and the things done. It also laid a foundation for a full assurance of faith. I want to make sure you hear that. It, this also, the eyewitnesses, the proclaimers in this account, is, has laid a foundation for a full assurance of faith. Thanks, Luke. As to the truth of the doctrines and the reality of these facts concerning the Lord Jesus. For from the beginning of Christ's ministries, these other persons composed their histories, are said to have been eyewitnesses as well as ministers of the word. Some say it was by the word, Luke meaning Christ himself. You see, one of Jesus' titles is the word. It's in caps and it's bolded. <laughs> That's all I can do. It's the word, John 1.1. 1, 1. And he is known as the Word of God, Word of the Father. We start Luke 1, verses 5 through 9 with Carla. Hallelujah. Luke 1, verses 5 through 9. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was the daughters was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Wow. 
They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot. It fell to him to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Now during the time King Herod ruled Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah he, he belonged to the priestly division order of Abijah. Priests were divided into 24 divisions. So that's from 2 Chronicles 31.2. King Hezekiah appointed divisions of priests for their special duties to offer sacrifices, burnt offerings. Leviticus 1 verses 1 through 17. Levit Leviticus 3.1, it's to worship and to give thanks and praise at the gates of the Lord's house. Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, came from the daughters, the female descendants of Aaron, the brother of Moses, and the first high priest of Israel. For a priest like Zechariah to marry a woman of priestly ancestry was a special blessing. And I want to go back to this thing. They were there to worship and give thanks and praise at the gates of the house of the Lord. It's the same thing we do. We come to worship, giving our thanks and praise. We come to worship you. We will do it all our day. We've come to worship, Lord Jesus, give you thanks and praise. All our days, all of our days in worship, all of our days we give you praise, all of our days in worship, giving you the glory to your name, all of our days giving you worship, all of our days, Lord, giving you praise, all of our days giving you worship. And we'll do it all our life long, all of our days. Worship and praise. Worship and praise. Oh, we don't want to leave out Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, yeah. Thank you, Lord, yeah. Not giving up, yeah. Not forgetting our Thanksgiving, Lord. We give you worship and praise. Hallelujah. God of heaven and earth, we give you your praise. We pick it up in verse 8, Luke 1. One day Zechariah was serving as a priest before God. He was before God because his group, his division was on duty. And according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot used to determine God's will, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Hebrews 9, 6, the parallel, the priest went into the first room every day regularly. Wow, I'd like to see believers go into their room every day regularly and worship the living God or just do it throughout the day. It says the priest were, were called, appointed, and anointed to go every day regularly to worship and serve and minister to the Lord performing their priestly duties. Verse 10, there were a great many people outside praying. It was at the time the hour of incense. Incense was being offered. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Listen. Are you kidding me? No, it's right here in the scripture. What was he thinking, man? You have an angel show up in the room, buddy. He's been doing it by faith. And, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. 
But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. The angel said, your prayer is heard, mister. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you're going to call his name John. Verse 14, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He'll be great in the sight of the Lord, and, and shall drink neither wine or strong drink. He also will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. That is so supernatural. I mean, you got to look at the supernatural events that God did to get us to this place in the scripture. The forerunner, Mary's cousin, wow, will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And Joseph Vincent commentary said, John shall be influenced by the Spirit of God even from the instance of his birth, thus sanctifying his nature and communicating into him wisdom and piety. This is an extraordinary measure. The Holy Spirit was communicating into him wisdom and piety. It's an extraordinary measure. In Scripture, to be filled with the Holy Spirit commonly signifies the degree of inspiration by which the prophets anciently spoke. According to this chapter, it applied to Elizabeth, to Mary, and to Zacharias. In this case, where they all spoke prophetically, Elizabeth, Mary, and Zacharias, where they all spoke prophetically. They all spoke by a certain creative impulse. It's a result of the Lord's divine inspiration. Verse 16 through 20. And John will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, what? who stands in the presence oh of God. God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Oh my Lord. And the angel replied to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, oh my God. which will be fulfilled <laughs> in their own time. I am Gabriel, the same servant of God, who, as the scripture informs you, appeared ancient, anciently to the prophet Daniel with a message concerning the Messiah. I am sent of God to communicate to you glad tidings of the near accomplishment of the things which I long ago showed to Daniel. You, by whose advanced age, should have given oh. you you, by whose advanced age, should have given you an advanced knowledge of divine things, as well as by a strong faith in the power of God. Zacharias, you are deserving of much blame for calling in question the truth of my message, wow. especially as by the prophecies of Daniel. You might have understood that this is the period, the time, determined for the coming of the Messiah and his forerunner. Jesus. That was from Joseph Benson commentary. It's amazing that Gabriel said it and he said, and because of that, you won't be speaking anymore until the child is born. <laughs> I went, wow. Wow. Verse 21, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them 
and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned them and remained speechless. And so it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth did conceive. Wow. And she hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach, that is the barrenness among his people. So thus the Lord, verse 25, has dealt with me in the days when he looked upon me in, in mercy and kindness to take away my reproach, that is of barrenness among the people. And Joseph Benson commentary said, Elizabeth retired from having company that she might have time to meditate on the wonderful goodness of God toward her and her husband, Zacharias. It was that they might praise him for it and rejoice therein. I love this. Uh, uh, how about you? It doesn't, if you're in your 50s or 60s, you're having a baby, you're going, what? <laughs> but I like it that she, for five months, she hid herself and this commentator said, well, it's that they might rightly praise him for it and rejoice therein. Now, some think it was to avoid seeing company that she might conceal her pregnancy for a while and not expose herself to the ridicule by speaking of it before she knew certainly that it was a reality. People still do that today. Well, I'm six weeks, I'm eight weeks, I'm 12, but I'm not saying anything to my family. I, I, I've heard it on and off. I want to be at least three months and make sure it's a reality. So saying, thus has the Lord dealt with me. I want to mark this now. The Lord has miraculously interposed and done this great work for me. The word, you guys, is miraculously. Count up the number of miracles that happened concerning Jesus' birth and then John the Baptist's birth as well. He put it right in there miraculously. He has interposed it and done this great work for me. He had respect for me to take away my barrenness since this was a great reproach among the Jewish people. Luke 1, 26 through 38, Christ's birth announced to Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come, and the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Man. He came and said to her, he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, endued with grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed, wow. favored of God are you before all other women. But when, he saw, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting is this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, wow. and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how could this be, wow. since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also wow. that Holy One who wow. is to be born will be called the Son of God. Wow. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. 
for with God nothing is ever impossible, oh, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. God can do anything because nothing is impossible with God, because no word, no message from God will ever fail. Genesis 18:14, is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Jesus. I will return to you at the right time of year, a uh, time a year from now. Jeremiah 32, 17. Oh, Lord God, you made the skies, the heavens, and the earth with your very great power. So we're going to sit here. We're not moving one inch till we sing verse 37. For with God, nothing is impossible, yeah. For with God, nothing is impossible. For with God, nothing is impossible. No word from God can return void. Yeah, for with God, nothing is impossible. Yeah, for with God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. Stay right on it. Verse 37, right in the middle of the announcement to Mary that she'll have the Son of God. Yeah, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Yeah, for with God, nothing is impossible. And by the way, no word from God shall be without power. No word from God will be impossible of fulfillment. Yeah. Nothing is with the living God. With the living God, nothing is impossible. Stay right there, don't move. For with the living God, for with the living God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing is impossible. No word from God will be without power. Yeah. No word from God is impossible to fulfill. No word from God shall be without power. We got for with God, nothing is impossible. Right in the middle of Luke 1, here it is. For with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe, verse 37, 37, Lord. Hallelujah, we believe your word. Hallelujah, we believe your word. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it out, yeah. Hallelujah, we believe your word. Hallelujah, we believe your word. Hallelujah, nothing is impossible with you. Hallelujah, we believe your word. Hallelujah, we believe your word. For with you nothing is impossible. Is impossible for with God nothing. Isn't that awesome, Carla? Tucked right in the middle of the story of the angel with Mary. How can it be I've never known a man? He goes, oh, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The power of the highest. And the Holy One who's to be born will be called the Son of God. Woo! Remember, let me give you that... Uh, that uh, reference again, Genesis 18, 14 from the expanded Bible. It includes the verse where it comes from in the Old Testament. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No, no, no. <laughs> Genesis 18, 14. We're going to pick it up. I'm going to finish that Luke 1, 38. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. 
how did she even know to say that? Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Oh, it's so powerful. And the angel departed from her. And then Mary praises God, the Ma Magnificat. They gave it the name. Then Mary said, stay with me, verse 46. Drop down to verse 46. My soul praises and magnifies the Lord. My soul praises and magnifies the Lord. My heart rejoices in God my Savior. Psalm 35, 9. My heart rejoices in God. I believe she was singing it. I don't think she just said it. It's debatable, but my soul praises and magnifies the Lord. My soul praises and magnifies the Lord. My heart rejoices in God, my Savior. My heart rejoices in God, my Savior. Are Mary's, and she quotes like five different psalms. My soul praises and magnifies the Lord. Yeah. My soul praises. Thank you, Mary. Thank God for her prayer. It's recorded in the scripture in Luke 1. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, my heart. My heart praises and magnifies the Lord. Yeah. My heart praises and magnifies the Lord. I rejoice in God, my Savior. I rejoice in. I'm just singing this verse just to tell you how important that we can slow down. Verse 47, my heart, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Psalm 35, 9. She's praying the word. If she's singing, she's singing the word. Verse 40, because he has shown his concern for, yeah, he actually noticed me. And he looked favorably upon me, his humble lowly servant girl I, I i can't that's hard to think about without we be i'm just this humble lowly servant girl and from now on all people's generations will say that i am blessed they will call me blessed psalm 138 verse 6 again she's quoting praying a psalm mary is praying the word Verse 49, you see, because the powerful, mighty one, he's done great things for me. What, what happened, Mary? Well, you see, because the mighty, powerful one has done great things for me, his name, I call it out loud, it's holy. His name is holy, verse 50. God will show his mercy forever and ever to generation after generation to those who worship, serve, fear, and revere him. This is Mary's prayer. This has to be one of the, one of the reasons why God chose her to bear his son. I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's a mystery. It's mind-blowing. I mean, you can't figure it out, really. But verse 50, God will show, yes, Mary, he'll show, he'll show his mercy forever and ever to those, generation after generation, of those who worship and serve fearing and revering him again psalm 103 verse 17 so far that's three psalms and then carla will finish up now verse 51 it looks like mary was full of the word wow she was two ways he has done mighty mighty deeds by his power with his arm 
his strength is put down the mighty from their seats oh, yeah. and exalted those of low degree. He has scattered the people who are proud and think great things about themselves in the thoughts, the intentions of their hearts. He has brought down rulers, the powerful, from their thrones and raised up, exalted the humble, the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, Psalm 107, verse 9, and sent the rich away with nothing empty-handed. He has helped his servant, the people of Israel, remembering to show them his mercy, as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his children, his descendants, his seed forever. And then Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. I got to do this song. Every valley, I was thinking of it when I was getting the narration ready. I haven't done this for a while, but this was written, I'm pretty sure, by Garrett Gustafson many years ago out of Isaiah. It's part of Mary's prayer right here. Every valley will be raised up And every mountain and hill made low And the glory of the Lord will be revealed And the humble will be lifted And the pride of man will fall And the glory of the Lord Every valley will be raised up, and every mountain in hill made low, and the glory of the Lord will be. This psalm is in this song, yeah. And the humble will be lifted, and the pride of man will fall, and the glory of the that is so rich. All right, here's the verse. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he sent empty away. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. And exalted them of low this is in Mary's prayer, pretty sure out of Isaiah. He has filled the hungry with the good things, the rich he sent empty away. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Yeah. And exalted them of low. Come on, learn it with me before we close out our stream today. Every valley will be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And the humble will be lifted, and the pride of man will fall. And the glory of the Lord. Okay, let me do the second verse. And in the wilderness a voice is heard. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He has given his kingdom to the poor. And exalted them of low degree. And there it is again. And exalted them up. Let me read both verses. And then you can look back at Mary's, the prayer of her heart, the Magnificat, many people have called it. But check this out. The two verses to every valley, the title of the song. If it's not on YouTube, I'd be surprised. I don't know. 
but he has filled the hungry with good things, which is part of her prayer. The rich he sent empty away, the mighty. He put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree, the humble, the meek. In the wilderness, a voice is heard, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He has given his kingdom to the poor. No one else thought to do. There's no king. There's no Lord. There's no prime minister. No, nobody anywhere ever thought to do. Only Jesus and the kingdom. And he exalted them of low degree that gives every one of us hope that we'll be positioned by the Lord fulfilling our destiny to do great works for him. And he exalted them. One more time. In the wilderness, a voice is heard. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He has given the kingdom to the poor and exalted them of low degree. Yeah. And exalted them of low. Here we go. Every valley, every valley, yeah. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill made low. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and the humble will be lifted, and the pride of man will fall, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and the glory of the So just one more time, I use the expanded Bible for this narration. I'm going to count them up. She says, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Psalm 35, 9, they put it right in there. For from now, now on, generations will call me blessed. Psalm 138, 6, Mary's praying the word. Then God will show his mercy forever and ever to generation after generation. To those who worship, serve, and revere him. Psalm 103, 17. That's three. Um, okay, now and there's four then. Because she said, he has brought down the rulers, the powerful from their thrones. And raised up and exalted the humble, the lowly. Psalm 107, verse 9. <laughs> So chock full of the word. I hope you've enjoyed this today. I have loved doing it. I just love the whole spirit of love and gift giving that Jesus gave us by giving his life that we celebrate with family and friends and stuff. Awesome. We did Mary. Did you know if you got on late, you can go back to the beginning of the stream and sing it uh, with us. And then we did, it came upon, no, excuse me, angels we've heard on high. It's just a real blessing. God bless you, and Merry Christmas in Jesus' name. That's what we get. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom.